All right, you're looking uh, right now at the uh, Ellicraft KX3 with PX3 above it, uh, situated in my uh, home-built uh, oak uh, display unit. Okay, again, here's a real quick look at the uh, little display stand I built. Real simple. I'm sure you can come up with your own idea. Uh, some operators will probably want uh, the unit maybe more uh, straight uh, and level. But I found that this uh, tends to work out, at least for me right now. I may make another change in the future, but again, it uh, gets, the, uh, gets the job done. Okay, looking at the unit on the far left, you've got your keyboard input for a USB keyboard. And I'm sure in future firmware upgrades, we'll have the ability to do things with a keyboard. Then you've got your ACC1 PC port, which allows you to connect the KUSB cable. Uh, for firmware upgrades and to also uh, control the unit and the uh, KX3 with uh, third-party software like HD, SDR, and Omni Control. Then you've got your ACC1 uh, port uh, for your transceiver to the KX3 and your Receive IQ. Now this is a dual cable that comes with the unit and of course it has different uh, size uh, plugs but you basically need that cable and a power cable to control this unit. Okay, then you've got your Receive IQ PC port, which allows you to uh, send the uh, signal to uh, a PC aftermarket third-party software, again, such as HDSDR, or in the case of an iPad, ISDR also works good with it as well. Then, of course, at the bottom, you've got your 9 to 16 volt DC plug, which powers the unit. Okay, now we'll go ahead and show you how we interface uh, the two units with the uh, provided cable. We'll start with the KX3 first. Okay, we made the connections now to ACC1 and the Receive IQ on the KX3. Now we'll go ahead and make the connections to the PX3. Okay, we've made the connections to the ACC1 uh, receiver and then of course the receive IQ on the unit and we'll go ahead and power up the unit and of course we now have a spectrum display and waterfall being fed from the KX3 if you wanted to uh, feed the uh, receive IQ out to a, a third party uh, software such as the HDSDR we take our plug, in this case this one's hooked up to an iPad and ISDR, and we would plug it in right there. So they've given you another port to be able to bring that out uh, to another uh, device or uh, a software. A little bit about the display. The display is a 480 by 272 pixel color TFT LCD, which is used for both the pan adapter spectrum and waterfall graphics as well as for general purpose information uh, needed by the operator. A display brightness and text size can be changed within the menu. Okay, looking at the uh, front panel of the uh, PX3, we've got uh, uh, two uh, control groups, uh, primary controls and programmable function switches on the unit. Uh, down along the right-hand side are buttons that uh, are programmed into the unit and cannot be changed along with the menu and labels button here at the bottom. The remaining four buttons down here, FN1 of course through FN4, uh, which also covers FN5 through FN8, are programmable uh, buttons so that you can program items uh, within the menu and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Alright, now we'll go ahead and talk about the, uh, the uh, primary controls on the right hand side. Uh, at the very top, we've got the button marked Display, and a quick tap of that uh, basically uh, pulls the uh, waterfall off and gives you only a spectrum. A quick tap of the button again brings back the waterfall. When you press and hold the button, which activates the average, you can adjust the averaging time from 2, which is where it's currently set, all the way up to 20, which basically uh, really slows down the refresh rate of the averaging time. Uh, I like to run mine about two, but every operator is different. Press and hold will make that uh, go away. All right, when we activate the uh, reference button, the reference sets the amplitude reference level of the display, both spectrum and waterfall. 
The reference level is the signal level in DBM that corresponds to the bottom of the spectrum display and the minimum dark blue signal level of the waterfall display itself. We can adjust the reference level up and down. A little bit about the spectrum display. Right now I've got mine set up here to read S units. We can change that by going to the menu and selecting a level mode and we can press and tap and we can change that to DBM. Now the vertical scale at the left of the spectrum display uh, basically is, uh, means decibels with respect to one milliwatt. In other words, zero DBM is one milliwatt with plus DBM equaling 10 milliwatts, etc. Basically an S9 signal uh, is normally considered to be 50 microvolts into 50 ohms which is basically minus 73 DBM. So it depends upon the operator how you want to uh, set yours up. Again, we can change that back to uh, S units and read S units only. Just out of reference. Press and hold puts us in the scale mode, and the scale sets a scale or range of both the spectrum and waterfall displays. Uh, basically, it's uh, also listed in uh, dB. And a, a quick uh, turn of the uh, select knob changes that, and then there's your scale right there indicated on the uh, display button which is right here press and tap it gives you the ability of adjusting the frequency span of the display uh, the available range is from 2 kilohertz all the way up to 200 kilohertz and that's where we're currently set right now on my display the start and stop frequencies are displayed at the top left and right edges of the unit as you can see right there plus 100 and minus 100 of the center frequency shown by taking the select knob we can reduce that span so that we can better see a signal within the spectrum and of course we'll crank this down to 100 which uh, basically allows us to see 50 kilohertz on either side and again as previously stated uh, the minimum bandwidth that it can see is 2 kilohertz and we'll crank this down to 2 kilohertz so you can see just about that Obviously, I like to see a lot of the band. Some bands, like 17 meters, you don't need to see as much because it is a smaller band segment. Some operators would probably like to just maybe see 50 on either side of their center frequency. We'll crank this all the way back up to 200 and leave it there. Okay, a little bit about uh, markers. Uh, both markers are currently off, but if we press a quick tap, we get marker A, and then we can control marker A, which is a green cursor line. And we can, let's see, tune in on the upper side of this particular frequency, 144.244. We can press this, and the unit will now QSY uh, to that frequency. Okay, when we press and hold, we can bring up marker B, and we can move marker B where we want it. And, of course, marker B coincides to VFOB on the KX3. Okay, let's say you want to run split. You've got a DX frequency operating uh, 3 to 5 KCs up or down from the frequency. We'll press and hold the split function on the KX3. And now we've got a red indicator indicating that's your transmit frequency on the KX3. So that gives you a visual uh, interpretation uh, right away that uh, that is your uh, transmit frequency. Take and press and hold that off to come out of split, and that'll go away. Again. Now, as far as uh, markers are concerned, uh, you can uh, do a couple things with markers in the menu. We'll press and hold the Labels button, and what we've done is we've pre-programmed a total of eight buttons to perform various functions that we would call Quick Access. We'd, first of all, we've got Waterfall Color. When we tap FN4, we can change our waterfall color from the blue to the grayscale, and then of course back to blue. Quick tap brings us out of that. Now waterfall markers, press and hold. We can basically turn the uh, markers on to continue down the waterfall. And when we turn marker A on, now as you can see that green line continues down with the waterfall representation. Press and hold marker B, and we've got the same thing. The magenta line follows on down the waterfall. 
We press and hold FN8 and we turn those waterfall markers off. A little bit about some of the buttons I've got programmed in here from the menu. We can press and hold and we'll freeze the display. Press and hold turns it back on. Waterfall quick press we can change the actual height or how much of the waterfall we see so we can crank this up to let's say 125 and now we've got uh, a lot more waterfall so you can uh, vary that based upon user preferences uh, LCD brightness press and hold this button and we can change how bright or how dim we want the display I like to run mine at about 50 yours may be different press and hold now peak quick tap will show a representation of a signals kind of like a histogram quick tap turns that off now one of the neat functions they introduced uh, with the uh, K uh, K3 and the P3 was a noise blanker function on the uh, actual pan adapter itself while you could easily get rid of the noise in the receiver you still had it on the spectrum which was kind of annoying I went ahead and programmed in my noise blanker and my noise blanker level so I can turn it on and off with a press of this button here and this indicates here up in the upper right hand corner the noise blanker is on. I can adjust that level by pressing and holding and then I can crank that number up or down based upon how strong that uh, offending pulse noise is. So that's a little bit about uh, the pre-programmed buttons I have and we can turn those off by pressing and holding. Now if we wanted to program those in we press and hold menu and we'll go ahead and bring the labels up at the same time and let's say we wanted to change the waterfall markers to something else. Let's say we wanted to change one of our pre-programmed buttons to something else after we've already programmed it in. Right now I've got rate selected and it says basically tap the knob to select or FN key to assign. So we'll go ahead and press and hold and we'll change it from, from waterfall markers to rate. Now it's been changed to rate on the display. Now to go back to waterfalls we have to bring waterfalls back up, waterfall markers press and hold now changes that back to waterfall markers so it's a pretty neat feature to be able to program those uh, items that uh, you feel you need to have quick access to and uh, don't want to necessarily have to go into the menu and turn and select the items turn the menu off and we can turn the labels off as well but it's a pretty neat feature that Elecraft has thought about now this is your cursor this is the, the present cursor that I've got on my display but you can believe it or not you can actually change that cursor to U-shaped I, I prefer this one but you can go into the menu and you go up to cursors here at the top of the menu and you can actually change the style of that to a, a U you can probably see it uh, in the video but it is now just a, a little U-shaped cursor and again if you want to go back press menu quick tap brings you back to the other one so you got two options and two types of cursors you can use okay now we're going to discuss the uh, latest uh, beta release for the PX3 revision 1.12 and revision 2.24 for the KX3 which has now added the ability to decode two lines of text on the PX3 so now as we come to press the menu labels button and hold it we get our labels and if we press and hold again we now have uh, decoding uh, of uh, CW or RTTY uh, right on the uh, PX3 as well as the KX3 so you can see right now we're decoding uh, CW and again this is a uh, a nice uh, update uh, for the PX3 from the bright minds at Elecraft and uh, I'm sure there'll be many more uh, coming down the road okay now when you go to send uh, CW that CW will show up in green at the bottom of the display and we'll just send a few characters here All right, that pretty much wraps it up on this end. Um, quick review of the Elecraft PX3. 
Uh, if you currently own a KX3, I highly suggest you look closely at uh, maybe adding this to the uh, to the unit you have now. And if you are interested in Ellacraft products and never have been around them, I highly suggest you go check out Ellacraft on the web. Thanks for watching. This has been JD N Zero IRS in Kansas City, Missouri.